So are you wondering why your nonprofit hasn't taken off yet? I'm gonna share some insights that may give you clues as to why you're not growing. Let's get into this one. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss on a Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So if you need help with your nonprofit, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I drop videos every week and I talk about startup and fundraising. This is gonna be a hard video for some of you guys to watch. I'm just giving you a warning right now, but I feel like it's some, there are moments where you have to have like a heart to heart and I like to be real and honest because if you're gonna do something as important as starting a nonprofit, you gotta know the reality of getting started. I think too many people go into it thinking it's just as simple as applying for your 501c3 and then you just get a grant and then you take off from there. And a lot of people have that assumption when they start out and then they learn pretty quickly that it's not like that. And so I wanna warn you before you go down that path so you can avoid some of the pitfalls that other people have experienced. But here's the thing, I can only provide the information for you and it's up to you to apply it and to see how it works and how it fits into your life. So I said all that to say, just, just listen, just be open to the things that you're hearing in this video because there may be some things that will be helpful for you. So in this video, I'm sharing five reasons why you might not be taking off. But at the end of the video, I do have just one piece of advice that I would share throughout all of this. So make sure you stay to the end of the video. So the first reason you might not be taking off is you might not be operating off a set of goals. So I've noticed with some people who I talk to about their nonprofits, they start because they've been doing an activity and that activity fulfills them. And so they want to continue to do that, but they wanna use the 501c3 tax designation as a way to fund the work, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing inherently wrong with that because you wanna be able to benefit from being tax exempt. But the problem is sometimes people still stay in that mindset of I'm just going to randomly do activities. I'm going to randomly do what I think should be done in my community. And so a lot of times when people do that, they don't ever set goals about what they want to accomplish. And that holds you back, first of all, because you have no idea where you're going. And it's hard to lead when other people who want to support you have no idea where you're going because you haven't set the intention. You haven't set the vision for the organization. So that's a big problem for your nonprofit if you haven't even set overall goals for what you want to accomplish. Here's the other thing though. If you want to grow, if you want to scale, then it has to be incremental, right? You have to get to one level and say, okay, we did that. We accomplished that. Now let's you know, let's take it to the next level. Let's dial it up a little bit and we want to keep growing. But you have no sense of like how you can grow, how you can scale, how you can get bigger or better because you never set a benchmark for yourself. You never know like if you accomplish something, whether you hit the mark or not. And here's the other thing too. If you don't set a goal, you'll never know that you didn't reach a goal. And sometimes that kind of information is helpful as you grow because there may be a lesson in understanding why you didn't grow, why you didn't hit the mark. Maybe you shouldn't be doing that or maybe you should be implementing a different kind of strategy or tapping into different people or going just another direction. But if you have not sat down and identified what the goals are for your organization and where you wanna go, it's really difficult for anyone to understand what's next. So if you're feeling like you haven't gone anywhere and nothing has happened, it could be very well that you haven't sat down and decided for yourself, what do we want our organization to be or what do we want it to look like a year from now? What do we want to be in five years? And once you do that, you'll begin to articulate, okay, if we want to get there, this is what we have to do to make that happen. And these are the resources we need to make it happen. So if you, you don't have clear goals, then the other stuff that needs to happen in terms of the money you need, in terms of the support, in terms of people that you need won't come easily or it just will kind of be all over the place. Number two is a biggie. Uh, you might not be going anywhere because you're doing too much. 
You're doing too many things and it's disjointed and you need to streamline the work that you do. And this is how this comes through for nonprofit founders. You want to help kids, but you also want to help the elderly, but you also want to help the homeless. Oh, and you know, a veteran. So you also want to provide veteran services. And in most circumstances, your nonprofit is not going to be able to handle that. You don't have the capacity to do all those things. And even if you want to do all those things, you can't start out doing everything at once. It has to be sequential. But a lot of people, because they have a heart for doing things and for helping people, their thing is, well, so many people need the help, so I'm just going to do everything. But this is what I would submit to you. It's hard to be good at everything when you're stretched thin, especially when you're new, especially when you're trying to get your footing, especially when you want to be recognized and build your visibility and build your brand. People need to understand who you are, what you do, why you do what you do. And if the answer to that question is, well, we do this, 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 and this, people often get confused. And when people get confused, they kind of shut off. So my biggest advice to you, if you feel like you have to do everything, you have to help everybody, really zero in on what you need to do now. And think about it like this. What's the population or what's the area of services you want to provide that has the most need? And then you can also think about what are the things you're most attached to? What are the things you have the most connection to? Because maybe you've done some of this work more than the other work. Maybe you're more directly connected to that work. So you have more expertise in how to do it and how to implement it. Maybe you have connections with um, other partners, other organizations or government agencies in doing some of the work. And so you don't have to do all of the groundwork because you have relationships already and you can start there. So think about like where you've already made a little bit of headway, where you already have some experience and start there. And I really, really recommend that you do some kind of strategic planning process where you identify like the pros and cons of pursuing a different strategy for your organization. You really think about, okay, Given the capacity of the organization, what our strengths, what our qualities are, does it even make sense for us to be doing that? Do we even have the capacity to do that well? Right. Because it's one thing to just do a service, but it's another thing to be able to do it well and to be the best suited for doing it. And if you're the best suited, then that makes it much easier to sell for people who you want to give to you, for people who you want to donate items and give their time to you. So I said all that to say, streamline the work that you're doing. You can't do everything at once. So you have to decide what is it that you want to focus on and work on that. Okay, so the next three, I know somebody's going to be mad, but you just got to get ready for it. So number three, this may ruffle a couple of feathers, but you may not be taken off because you don't have the right team. And by team, I may mean your board members, it may be a set of volunteers, it may be whoever is helping you with your nonprofit. But I'm gonna focus mostly on the board because that's usually how it manifests for nonprofit founders. And this is what happens with most of the founders that I talk to. And if you're watching this video, you probably have experienced this or are experiencing this right now. You start your nonprofit, you look at the paperwork, you see you need board members, I don't know anybody in the community. I'm just going to put my mom, I'm going to put my cousin, I'm going to put my sister, I'm going to put my best friend on here. And for now, we're going to be on the board. And then you may even go as far as having them actually, instead of just a name, having them actually serve on the board. But then something happens. You start to get your footing, you start doing activities and they don't show up like you need them to show up. Or you ask them to do an assignment, they don't do the assignment. Or... You know, the personal dynamics that you may have, especially if it's like a parent, right? And a parent wants to do it one way, but you want to do it another way, but that's your mom and that's your dad and you don't want to be disrespectful. And it creates that weird dynamic for your nonprofit. All these things, um, you're probably like nodding your head right now, some of you watching this video. All of this comes from you putting friends and family on the board. And I recommend you rethink that strategy. And in this video that I'm linking above, I'm gonna share reasons why um, you wanna rethink that strategy. Or if you have to start with family and friends, move pretty quickly beyond that. Uh, Cause it just gets messy. And you wanna get frustrated, you wanna get upset, and you're gonna be mad that the people who you thought cared about you 
um, aren't, aren't doing enough. But just because they're not doing what you think is enough for your nonprofit doesn't mean they don't care for you. So you got to be really careful about that. But, you know, people get frustrated by their board members, even if they're not related. But it becomes even weirder and a tougher dynamic if you are related. So that's just one way, because it's not the only way that nonprofits experience challenges with their team. Other things that may be happening is that you have board members who were gung ho, who you thought were going to be all in, and they may not be your family or friends, but you thought that you'd be able to do some things with these people. You find yourself at meetings agreeing to do something, but then when the meetings go away, it's like they forgot what y'all supposed to be working on. And then when you come back, it's like they don't know what you're talking about, right? Or people sign up and they're busy. Life gets in the way. They have families, they have jobs. And even though you may have a family and a job too and you're making it work, you're frustrated that they're not making it work. What I'm here to say is that you may need new people. Another way this may manifest is when board members refuse to ask for money or help participate in your fundraising activities. That's a big one. People get really frustrated when board members don't. And there are a lot of things that may be going into this, right? People may have fears, people may just have life going on, whatever it is, but they may be indicators that you got to get some new people. And I know it's hard having conversations with certain people, asking them what they really want to do, whether or not they're really committed to this, asking them whether or not it's time for them to step down, but you have to have those conversations because them holding that spot on the board is preventing someone else from excelling in that position. And when you can't have the best at the table or the best for what you need at that moment, then it's going to be hard for your organization to grow. Think about the impact of having someone who's not pulling their weight and dragging that out, right? It's going to impact your growth. It's going to impact your ability to make an impact with your community. So you need to really start thinking about whether or not you really have the right people at the table. And at one time you may have thought they were the right people and that's fine, but things change. And you got to be able to change with it. So you really need to examine whether or not the people you thought were what you needed in the season you needed them in, whether it's different now and you need to move on, right? And I know this is hard to hear, but I just really hope that you take this to heart and start thinking about who you want to be at the table. Given this experience and how it worked out for you and may not have been ideal, now in your next season, who do you want? Who do you need? What kind of personality do you need at the table? What kind of background or experience do you need at the table? And more intentionally recruit and vet the right people. If you need help recruiting board members, I do have a board member recruitment toolbox. I'm linking it below and it gives you tools that you can use to help pick out like who you want to serve in your board. And it has sample letters and sample board agreements so you can start off on the right foot. Number four is going to be some shots fired, but I'm going to go into it. You may be too controlling. One of the reasons why your organization may not be growing or taking off is because you don't trust anybody. And because you don't trust anybody, that means you only let people do but so much or you're only willing to think out of the box but so much or to take certain advice. And this is what you have to remember about your nonprofit, even though it's hard to hear this. If it's your baby, I understand that, but it's not your organization. It's up to the people who have current oversight of the organization to make the best de decision in the interest of the organization. It's not in your interest that they're operating. It's in the interest of the organization. So people have to be open and willing to think about what will help the organization grow, even if it makes you uncomfortable as a founder even if it makes you hesitant as a founder. If it's the right decision for the organization, then the decision has to be made to support the organization. And if you are holding a tight rein on decisions, if you're not allowing people access to things, you don't let them see information about the organization, you're stifling your growth. And it can actually backfire on you, right? Um, sometimes people feel like, okay, well, I don't want, I don't trust a lot of people, so I'm only going to have two people on the board. Well, major donors or funders may look at that with the side eye because if you only have two people providing oversight, then where are the checks and balances when it comes to how their money is going to be used? And they're less confident when it's less people providing 
oversight. So you just got to think about all these things and how it may be impacting your growth. You may be feeling like you're protecting your organization, but you actually may be preventing your organization from growing. So I want you to get comfortable with taking advice. I want you to get comfortable with being criticized. I want you to get comfortable with seeing your programs done in a different way than you might have imagined. And I'm not saying take every piece of advice that someone gives you, but at least be open and be willing to shift and adjust. And finally, you may not be growing because the whole reason why you started your why was off, right? It was misguided. So what do I mean by this? Sometimes people start nonprofits for very personal reasons and there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times it's very, it's so personal to you that it doesn't really translate to other people and it's not really a need in the community or it's not really what people are asking for. The last thing you wanna do is go through all the motions of creating a whole nonprofit organization and designing services that people don't want or people don't need because you wasted all that time and all that energy and probably your money designing something because it's something that you wanted. It's something that you thought someone should have, but you're not doing this to satisfy you. You're starting your nonprofit because you want to address a problem. So if you want to address a problem the right way, you need to go to the source, meaning you need to go to the people who are struggling with that problem and ask them what they need. You need to look at the data, look at the research, look at what others are doing to examine what's currently being done. And is it enough? Is it adequate? How can it be changed, adjusted, made better to better serve the people that you're working for? It is not about you. It is not all about satisfying what you want for yourself. Because a lot of people start nonprofits because it's in memory of somebody or they had a really positive experience in a program and they want to do something similar. But I just really recommend that before you design any kind of service or start your nonprofit, make sure it's what the community actually needs. So in my nonprofit business bundle, I do have three different workbooks that can help you plan out your programs, help you flesh out your idea and your mission and all of that, and help you think about how you're gonna raise money and how all that connects. So if you need help fleshing that out, make sure you check out my nonprofit business bundle below. So I, I promise to give you a piece of advice before I ended the video and this is what I'll say. It's going to take you some time to take off. So if you're watching this video and you've been around for two years and you're frustrated that you haven't been as successful as you thought you would be, just have patience. It's not going to happen overnight. So just because you've been around for two years and you haven't grown like you want to, it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything wrong either. Maybe all the things that I said in this video don't necessarily apply right? So just be patient with yourself. This takes time. It takes time to build up to have enough financial resources so you can pay yourself a salary. It takes time for people to pay attention to what you're doing and be willing to donate to your organization. It takes time to build up a strong group of volunteers or build a strong board. This is an ongoing process. And it's going to take four or five years to get where you really want to go or at least start to get there. So I just recommend for you guys, just be easy on yourself, show yourself grace and just be patient, but be intentional about the work that you're doing. That's why I create these workbooks. That's why I create these masterclasses, because I want to make sure that in your planning, like in your doing, that you're going about it the right way. You're doing the right planning. You're being intentional, right? So that you can get to your success quicker. That's the whole reason why I created Boss on a Budget. It's the whole reason why I want to support you guys in your journey. So if you need help with your nonprofit journey, make sure you visit me at www.bossonabudget.com and I will see you in the next video.